This week is going to have the same basic structure of previous weeks. First, we're going to learn a mechanism that supports interactive programs. That mechanism is called Big Bang. And no surprise, there's kind of a bad pun involved in the name of Big Bang. We'll talk about that later. So first, we're going to learn that mechanism. And then later in the week, we'll start learning how to design with it. To explain the Big Bang mechanism, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by looking at a couple example interactive programs and just kind of reason from first principles about what has to be going on inside those programs, the inherent structure of those programs. Then I'll explain how Big Bang works and how it supports that structure. So imagine that we have two fairly boring interactive programs. So the one on the left is just counting down 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, and so on. And the one on the right just has a cat walking very slowly across the screen. And I'm going to say these programs are interactive because if I press the space key, they both reset back to the beginning and start running again. So that's the sense in which they're interactive. These two programs have classical interactive behavior. Some underlying state is changing, the number in the countdown or the position of the cat. There's a changing image on the screen, and pressing the key does something, or perhaps clicking the mouse might do something. So there's two simple interactive programs. Now let's think about what's going on behind the scenes, starting with the countdown program. There's the current number in the countdown, which is the middle column of this table. It starts at 10, and then it goes to 9, and so on. And there's the currently displayed image, which is the image of the number 10, the image of the number 9, and so on. And what's happening is that once a second, n gets decreased by 1, and the image gets updated to be the image corresponding to the current n. So there's kind of this behavior of the clock ticking, tick, 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 and each time n and the image are both updated. Now if we look at the cat program, the same kind of thing just inherently has to be going on inside of it. In this case, the changing state is the cat's x position. It starts at 0, and then it goes to 3, and then it goes to 6. The idea is that the cat's moving 3 units per tick. And in this case, the image is an image of a cat at that position, rather than an image of the numeral. And in this case, the ticks are also counting up, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, but they're counting much faster in this case. Let's just say for now they're ticking 28 times per second, whereas in the countdown program, we wanted it to tick one time per second. Now continuing with this exercise of thinking about what just has to inherently be inside this program, let's think in terms of information and data for a second. We've got these numbers 0, 3, 6 that are representing the x position of the cat. So when we do something like that, what we use is a data definition. We use a data definition to tell us how we're going to represent domain information using data. So here's a data definition for that. We're going to say that cat is a number, and we're going to interpret that number to be the x-coordinate of a cat. And the rest of this data definition is fairly straightforward now. It's simple atomic data. Looking back at our table, we see that at each clock tick, what happens is that the representation of the cat's x-coordinate increases by the speed each time. So it goes from 0 to 3 to 6 to 9. So here's a function that does that for us. Its signature is cat to cat, so it takes a cat and produces a cat. And it increases that position by the cat's speed. And there's some check expects. And if we look at the body of the function, we can see what we expect. It takes the current cat, the current x-coordinate of the cat, and increases it by speed. Going back to the table again, and still thinking about just what inherently has to be inside this program, we see that at each clock tick, we need to produce an image based on the cat's current x-coordinate that shows the actual cat farther and farther across the image of some background scene. In this case, the background scene is white. So here's a function that does that. The function consumes a cat and produces an image. And we're using a primitive here that you haven't seen before called place image. But the way place image works is it takes an image, and then it takes an x-coordinate, a y-coordinate, and a second image, and it places the first image 
at the given xy coordinate on the second image. So what this function is doing here is it's placing the image of the cat, which happens to be the value of a constant called cat image, at the appropriate x coordinate in the middle of the background image, which happens to be called MTS. So there's a data definition and two functions. One function, next cat, can take us from one cat to the next cat. In other words, it can advance the cat's x position by three each time, zero, three, six, and so on. The other function can take us from a cat to an image of the cat. In other words, the image of the cat at the appropriate position on the background called MTS. Now we need to understand how those two functions need to dance together in order for the cat to move across the screen the way we want it to. Suppose the cat starts at zero. We need to call render cat to get the appropriate image and display that. Then we need to call next cat with zero to get three. Then we need to call render cat with three to get the image and display it. Then next cat with three to get six. Then render cat we call with six to get the next image and display that. Then we call next cat with six to get nine. Then render cat with nine to get the image and display it. Next cat with nine to get 12. Render cat with 12, next cat with 12, 15, and so on and so on and so on. And all we need to do is do that 28 times a second, which I can't talk that fast. To do that, to wire render cat and next cat together that way, Dr. Rackett gives us a special expression called a Big Bang expression. And here's an example of how we would use Big Bang to make the cat walk. The first argument to Big Bang is an expression that evaluates to what Big Bang calls the initial world state, the initial state of this whole interactive world. In this case, the state of the interactive world is represented by the cat type. And so we're going to give it an expression that produces a cat. So zero is the initial position of the cat. After its first argument, Big Bang takes a number of options. And it takes so many that the way it does it is to take them by name. That way you can give it only the options you want to give it each time. The way to read this first option is it says each time the clock ticks, call the next cat function, pass it as an argument, the current state of the world, and it will give you back the next state of the world. Because in this particular Big Bang expression, the state of the world is represented by cat, I've put a comment here saying that the type of the first argument to Big Bang in this case is cat, and another comment here that says that the signature of the next cat function is that it consumes cat and produces cat. The second option to Big Bang in this case is called to draw. And you should read this use of to draw as saying that what Big Bang is going to do is on each clock tick, it's going to call render cat, passing render cat as its first argument, the current world state, in other words, a cat, and render cat will produce an image, and Big Bang will display that image. And I've made a note here off to the side that the signature of render cat is that it consumes cat and produces image. So what Big Bang is doing for us is it's taking all the little pieces of our world, the initial world state, the tick function, the draw function, and it's combining all those pieces together to get a world. Do you see the joke behind the name now? It squeezes the pieces together. Big bang, it produces a world. Uh, whether you like that joke about the name or not, that is the name, I didn't come up with it. One other point to make about Big Bang is that it's what computer scientists like to call polymorphic. It can work for any type of world state. So Big Bang doesn't just work with cats. It can work for, for example, if you have an interactive world program that has to do with fireworks, then the world state could be firework. Or if you have an interactive program that has to do with lots of fireworks, then the world state could be list of firework. The world state can be anything you want to be. So actually here where we've where we've noted cat and cat to cat and cat to image. As far as Big Bang's concerned, it can be anything. So really it could be x, x to x, and x to image. All Big Bang wants is for you to give it an initial world state. And then for on tick, you've got to give it a function that consumes a world state of that type and produces a world state of that type. 
And then for two draw, you have to give it a function that consumes a world state of that type, whatever it is, and produces image. The key thing is, in any one use of Big Bang, all the X's have to be the same type. They all have to be consistent. That's what matters to Big Bang. So there's Big Bang. It's without a doubt the most complicated single primitive we're going to use this term. It's a user interface framework, and user interface frameworks, in other words, tools that integrate a bunch of functionality together to get an entire user interface, user interface frameworks are always somewhat complicated. This one is simpler than most. Don't worry about it. We're going to spend the whole week on it. You'll get a lot more chances at it. But the basic thing to understand is this picture up here in the upper right, that's what Big Bang is doing. It's starting with an initial world state, and then it's coordinating calling functions like render cat and next cat to produce the combined behavior of the interactive program that we want to have. We'll also see, starting in the next video, that there's more options. So for example, Big Bang has an option called onKey. And you can imagine that the way that works is onKey wants a function that it will call when a key is pressed on the keyboard. And that function should process the key properly and produce the next world state. What we'll also see in the next video is we're going to introduce a design recipe for designing interactive programs using Big Bang, and that design recipe is going to help make it a lot easier to write programs that use Big Bang.